Today I'm going to be demonstrating to you how to build a mousetrap catapult. It's something I do for um, Newton's laws when I teach the first, second, and third laws. There's a lot of different things that you can actually do with your students. This is for fifth grade, so it's a very um, obviously elementary um, project, but it's really fun. A couple things that you'll need are mouse traps that I have already kind of taken them apart. They're only about $1.50. We got them at Kmart today. Um, a sturdy rubber band, not a thin one because it'll probably break. You'll need a popsicle stick and then break one in half a plastic spoon, two pink erasers, a roll of duct tape, and I looked at the fancy stuff that all the kids are making bags with and it's about four bucks for 10 feet. This is only about six for 60. So this is definitely the better bargain for your money, but a lot of the kids would probably enjoy having a different color duct tape. And of course, since it's a marshmallow catapult that we'll be uh, making today, I have my mini marshmallows. And I just did the cheap kind. They're not as obviously good as um, uh, like a jet puff or whatever, but they are definitely a lot harder in the consistency. Um, and one thing that I do with my students is I tell them they're not allowed to eat these, but I always have a stash of big marshmallows to feed them after they're finished so they're not tempted to eat them because we use them and they're all over the floor. So just a little tip for you. Okay, the first thing you want to do, take out your mouse trap. And now, for the students, a lot of them feel a little bit scared uh, when they're doing this. And I usually put them with partners so that one of them can hold it. But the more fear they show, the more likely they are to injure themselves. And I've never had anyone actually snap it on them, but it's okay. You pull it back like this, take the rubber band, hold it with your thumb here. And it doesn't really matter if you get that little, there's this little, see it didn't hurt. There's this little guy at the end. It doesn't matter if that gets caught up in there. So basically the idea is you want to hold this back with a rubber band. So I usually do three or four to hold it back just like this. This little piece of cheese, I just usually just take right off. I put it down, take off the duct tape. I have a piece ready to go. I usually put it right next to this little guy where I took off the cheese. I put it right here. Next thing you want to do is wrap it with duct tape, but be careful you do not go over the spring. Don't go over the arm here. So you want to make sure it's secure enough without going over um, that arm. So I'll do it, try and do it quickly here. Kind of cover it at the end. With the next one, you want to place it slightly over right here, which would I guess be the fulcrum right here. You want to put it just a little bit over as you can see. Rip off a piece of duct tape. And again, just make sure it's secure and make sure you do not uh, tie down the arm of your catapult because then your arm will not move. And you tape it. And sometimes kids really need a lot of help with knowing how to duct tape things, which I find a little bit strange, but it's true. Or they're not, they're just kind of awkward because they're scared of the mouse trap popping, but it's fine. After you have this secure, kind of just wiggle a little bit just to make sure. Take this off carefully, and it should hold right there. Okay. The next thing you want to do is, we're going to put the arm on eventually, but you want to secure, have a secure place for it. So we're, the next thing we're going to do is duct tape this as kind of like a, a stabilizer for our arm. So more duct tape, of course. This is another tricky thing. So if you have elementary students, they have a hard time with this, and they usually tape it to um, the stopper back here, which then it obviously won't go anywhere. So make sure you monitor this with your students. Um, you want to put it this way as a reinforcer. You want to pull it away a little bit like this to tape it. And again, don't just make sure that you don't tape it um, to the stopper or else it's going to go nowhere and some kids find that out too late and to pull off duct tape can be very challenging. 
So just make sure that this is probably the part where mo a lot of kids, if they're not paying attention or following the directions that I give, that's where they um, can make a, a mistake. So pull back like this, it should separate. Next thing you want to do is put another reinforcer because plastic spoons can be very, very breakable, especially if you're pulling them to launch mini marshmallows. So next thing you want to do, duct tape this. And again, make sure the students are not duct taping, are not duct taping um, the arm to the stopper, which is, I'm just calling this a stopper to make it easy language. All right. Make sure this guy is secure. If this is very wobbly, this whole arm is going to be very um, insecure. So next step is this way. Make sure before you let them tape it, they're paying attention because if they do it this way, which seems natural, they're not going to be able to launch their marshmallows. So always make sure you can either do it this way or you can do it this way. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure when you bend back the spoon part, when you put the marshmallow, is this way. This way obviously is not going to hold a marshmallow. So that is another common error that many of my students have made. So just watch that. Again, more duct tape. I have to make sure I don't make that mistake or I'll be very embarrassed. All right. And I would say depending on how far you want to launch it, you know, longer, but then you have to realize that if you don't have that reinforcement behind it, it's easier for that plastic spoon to break. So I usually go about halfway and then wrap it again with duct tape really well. And just a side note, if you want to reuse anything, it's I have a really difficult time reusing anything because of all the duct tape. It's very secure, but then if you want to reuse the erasers, they get really, really sticky when you take all the duct tape off. Even if I use the Gooby on, it's hard to reuse the erasers. So here is my mouse, not mouse, marshmallow catapult. I'm using a mouse trap, a mouse trap catapult. Next thing you do, I usually um, reserve the gym if you have that available. I reserve the gym and they usually take some some shots. And at this time, they usually notice if like mine, I can see that it's a little wobbly. So I usually have them reinforced with duct tape. I usually try to see if they can go in a straight line. If it's not in a straight line, it could be because they're going like this or the angle or whatever. When you're shooting it, what I usually have my students do is one partner holds um, this part down with two fingers. And the other partner, usually you need to go by here usually because if it's not secure, like this usually tends to happen if, if they're not holding it down or if they're way tippy top. So anyway, one of the things I like to do with my students is to kind of figure out how they get the best aim and how they get the best distance. So this is the marshmallow catapult. I will do a little demonstration for you. Right here. And that's about how far they go. And some kids, I think the, the record was, I think, 10 or 15 feet. So it's really fun. This is probably one of my favorite projects. And um, this is the marshmallow catapult.